Welcome, Dr. Preeti. I'll just introduce you to our group. Dr. Preeti Savardekar is a dermatologist for over 20 years in South Mumbai, treating and training people with a holistic approach. We've always heard about how sensitive our skin is, and lots of things can get under our skin. Dr. Preeti says that the skin is like a big mirror, and everything that goes on in the mind is reflected in the skin. So let's listen in to her fascinating insights about how a change in our thoughts can transform our skin. So with no further ado, over to you, Dr. Preeti. A warm welcome to everyone. Thank you, Sienna. Can we enable screen sharing, please? It's showing disabled. Yeah. Thank you. I'll co-host just a sec. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just a sec. Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you. And I'll put you in spotlight also. Great. Screen is visible? Yes. Wonderful. So yes. uh, thank you so much, Atman, first of all, to uh, give me this opportunity to be on this platform. And a warm welcome to everyone who is uh, uh, over here. So the agenda for the next one hour would be a little introduction on how the skin works, how things happen in our skin, insights for good, healthy skin. How can we create a shift in our skin health? And I'm going to share a few case studies, how I have used and incorporated radical along with my treatment in my clinic with my patients, and they've got amazing results. And then, of course, in the end, we have some questions, maybe a demo, a consultation, whatever is possible, if we have the time. So uh, as a human being, we are all here to experience life. We want to enjoy life. And for that, we need confidence. We need happiness inside. And we need appreciation from all the people around us, our friends, our families. Now, the physical body is the first thing when we present to anyone when we meet them. And the skin is the largest organ covering our physical body from our head to our toes. And it has hair, it has nails. This is the first thing we present to anyone when we meet someone. And it forms hence an integral part of our personality. So considering this fact, who would not like to be appreciated? Who would not like to be happy? We want our uh, uh, you know, in, in our happiness also comes from our external appearances. And like we explained, I mean, like we talked that the skin is a reflection. It's a big mirror to what's happening inside our bodies. So the brain here, I also want to share that the brain and the skin, why does this reflection, why is this mirror connected? Why is the skin like a mirror? The brain and the skin are formed at the same time from the ball of cells or the embryo when a woman is pregnant in the fifth month of pregnancy this ball of cells from the outer layer forms the brain and the skin at the same time from the same cell layer now because of which they are very connected they both get affected by the same hormones the same neurotransmitters and hence whatever happens in your brain can show up in your skin whatever happens in your skin can show up in your brain so this is where the psychophysiological disturbances can show up. I mean, uh, when you have, you know, when we blush, what's happening inside? We are uh, happy. When we are angry, our face becomes red and we are, uh, you know, the skin starts showing anger. When we are in anxious, we have fear. Then we have perspiration. We have uh, sweating. And these are the ways that when your brain, whatever's happening inside can show up on your skin and give you a sign externally. So to form our personality, when we have to present ourselves to anyone, everyone would like to have perfect skin, perfect hair, perfect nails, and of course, inner happiness. That as a whole package can turn out to be a wonderful personality, which everyone is happy to be with. So. Let's go on. Men and women both are very uh, conscious about their skin now. We've seen a lot of men coming up to our clinics in the last decade. And it's not only the women. Men also are very affected by uh, 
uh, how their skin presents and how they look. And hence, uh, the need for catering to a large population, understanding where it comes from. So we had more experience with what goes on inside and how uh, we can achieve that great skin. I want to share with you today how that glowing skin with clarity can be achieved, how that inner happiness can be achieved. So the first thing comes with diet and nutrition. A balanced diet, which includes protein, carbohydrates, good fats is very important. But in the vitamins, what should you have? The colored fruits and vegetables, the red and yellow, <clears throat> the orange colored fruits and vegetables contain a lot of beta carotene. And this is very important for your skin cells to be healthy, plump, glowing, you know, to give you the ni nice kind of color. Whether you're dark or whether you're fair, it doesn't matter because even dark skin can be really glowing and can be uh, having a nice sheen. So the black and white doesn't matter, but it's how clear or how good your texture is, how much of ruggedness, how smooth your skin is. These are what matter. So in your diet and nutrition, if you can do eight to 10 glasses of water, which is about two to three liters, have a good diet with vitamin A, E, and C, have enough protein because your skin and hair is made up of protein. And when your protein is deficient, you start noticing your hair is thinning, your skin starts getting wrinkles faster or they age faster, open pores come up. And of course, sunlight uh, causes photo damage. But if you're eating well, if your diet is good, you can counteract that damage because uh, the vitamins A, E, and C produce free radical, they stop the free radical damage, which is happening in our body because of the sunlight exposure. So in some ways, you might say sunlight is good for vitamin D3 and it's good for skin, yes. But on the face, because the face is exposed to light, even our computer screens, the computer screen, the gadgets, the iPads, the phones that we use can cause damage onto our skin, just like sunlight. So the arms and legs are open to take vitamin D3, but the face needs to be protected with a sunscreen. So when you eat well, you take protection, you take care of your water intake, automatically there's a glow, your skin starts functioning well, and uh, you start noticing clarity. Beauty sleep, the sleep is very important. And during sleep, basically, our body undergoes rejuvenation. There's renewal of skin cells. Uh, your uh, mind also starts putting things in the folder. Whatever happened in the day, you have folders in your mind. Your mind is like a computer. And everything gets rearranged. Everything gets organized. So if you don't sleep well, your mind is not happy or not relaxed. Automatically, your body starts getting unhappy and not relaxed. Automatically, it shows up on your skin. So everything is connected and hence you need to sleep eight to 10 hours or at least six to eight hours for adults and the children need to sleep for eight to 10 hours every day. And when you sleep well, you'll see that your functioning in the body, your skin, your mind, everything is more comfortable, you're less irritable, you're less anxious. These will definitely make a change. So along with that, you need to exercise, you need to have movement, you need to have increased circulation so that the functioning is going on uh, properly. And the best exercise would be a walk, a dance, uh, maybe a little, you know, if you have a pet, you can run around with the pet, you have children, you can play with them. Most of us now are with our, with our computers, the children are at home with their iPads and we don't actually go out to play, but this is very important. So uh, the people who have been exercising, who have been doing a regular routine, always seem to have good skin. And, uh, you need to have periodical relaxation. You need to have periodic times to clear up your mind. So meditation, massages, music, all these things help you to relax, calm your skin cells. Whatever stresses you've gone through to the day can be calmed down by taking uh, 10, 15 minutes of meditation every morning or every night and uh, listen to music before you sleep. Before you sleep is when your mind is really active because you're thinking what's happened, what's gone all through your day. And at that time is what you're feeding your subconscious mind. So if you're sleeping with stress from the whole day, your subconscious mind is also going to be stressed. If you're relaxed and calm before you sleep, your sleep will be more restful and more productive. So these things could be done uh, on a regular basis to see that your skin and hair looks good. Uh, vitamins and antioxidants. So many people say that, doc, I'm, I don't eat, uh, I'm, I'm Jain and I don't eat non-vegetarian. I can't eat, uh, you know, the foods which are underground. So uh, onions, potatoes, 
uh, carrot, beetroot, all this grows underground. Now, how will I get my vitamin A and E? So these cases, we have to supplement the vitamin A and E, uh, vitamin C. And uh, you can uh, do this because if you don't, we've seen this in our practice that uh, the patients who have not been eating well start showing changes in their skin much faster. So 25, 30 year olds start showing their first wrinkles, their hair starts uh, you know, thinning and they have the male pattern balding and uh, this, they show open pores and their skin texture is not good. So it's important to replace these vitamins and antioxidants if you're not able to eat a good diet. Step up your protein by having more tofu, have more pulses. You know, every day one pulse should be included in your meal if you're vegetarian. And uh, these, every meal could have uh, a protein in, their, uh, in your diet. And that will make a lot of change to keep your skin cells, your hair cells, even your muscles, even your tissues, all overall, your body needs protein to function better, and it doesn't make you tired also. So these could be kept in mind. However, people who have imperfections, people who have tarnished skin, people who have uh, eczema, psoriasis, they're dealing with skin problems, need to go to the doctor for a skin consultation, understand where they are coming from, understand why it's happening. And this is where when patients have been coming to me and they've visited different doctors, I help them to understand the metaphysical reason of why they have these problems. And that made a lot of difference to their lives, made their skin problems go better or go away, uh, depending upon how, you know, how genetically they are involved. And some of them also uh, can do treatments. So at the clinic, when they come with, uh, already the skin has got damaged, the hair has already got lost, you already lost a lot of hair. We can grow back your hair. We can get your skin corrected. We can get your uh, scars filled up. We can make your fine lines, wrinkles get better so that you can start getting your confidence back again so that you can feel the appreciation. You can feel the self-love. All this doing things for yourself is a part of self-love uh, as Atmanam was just explaining. So uh, these could be followed. These could be taken care of. And of course, if uh, you, know, you have any concerns, we can always get in touch. So the other part now, understanding how we can create the shift. Our body, our tissues, our muscles, our skin stores our emotions which are going on in our mind. And hence, we need to heal our stored emotions to heal our physical body. So many people who've just done treatments at the clinic, who've done a lot of doctors, but they're still not happy. This is where we need to go inside. We have to clear their emotional uh, mind at the same time along with their skin and emotional cleansing along with external skin care can give you long-term results and even give you freedom from what you're facing, the imperfections, the skin issues that you're dealing with. <clears throat> so what are the blocks in our skin health? What is actually causing these blocks? Why are we not able to understand the emotions? Why are we suffering? These are the questions you should look into or think about. What beliefs are limiting you? From our childhood, what have we heard? our environment, our parents, our neighbors, our teachers. So there have been patients who came and said, my uh, teacher used to always say, oh, you're eating chocolate, you're going to get pimples. And every time he heard that, the child forms a belief in the mind. Every time I eat chocolate, I'm going to get pimples. The child forgets as they grow older. And every time they eat chocolate, they manifest pimples. And they don't know why this is not stopping because chocolate is a regular part of your routine. And if, for example, another uh, lady who had come, she said, every time I get my periods, I get pimples. Of course, it's hormonal, but uh, her hormones were completely fine. There was no issues that we found in her body. So I just had to work with her beliefs because she had heard from her friends, from her peers, her mother, that, oh, every time you get pimple, uh, periods, you will get pimples, you will get PMS, you will get irritable. And all those symptoms were being manifested just because of that belief. So... Uh, when you understand where they're coming from, when you try to understand their emotion, you can actually solve a lot of issues uh, going on in the mind. Have we actually let go of our past beliefs, past mistakes, past memories? You would wonder what past mistakes. So um, there have been many patients who came and said, doctor, the first time I, I shaved my legs when I was 12 and after that I've got thick hair all over my body. I mean, I'm so guilty I did that, but now what can I do? So it's not a mistake because uh, the hair had to be thick because your hormones were imbalanced. The stress that you took from doing that, the guilt that you picked up from doing that actually made you get the stress 
and the stress made you get the hormone imbalances. So it's all connected. You need to just look into yourself, understand the root cause. Where is this stemming from? External things can be corrected with technology. There's lots available now, but until we correct the root cause, things don't get better. And hence, we need to understand where we are coming from. Past memories. Sometimes people have told us, oh, your skin is so bad. You, you should get fairer. You sh you're so dark compared to your siblings. All these things need to be cleared from our heads because as children, what we hear and what we understand, what we listen to gets embedded in our subconscious mind. And as we get into adulthood, we forget these things because they are at the back. They are not in the front. And hence, these things need to be looked into to clear your present uh, issues that you're dealing with. How sensitive are you? How many people actually have sensitive skin? People say that, oh, my skin is so sensitive. Every time I go in the sun, I get uh, rashes. Every time I have this food, I, every time I drink milk, I get a rash. Every time I have a certain kind of meat, I get urticaria, my skin starts itching. All these are sensitivities, again, because you could be sensitive in your mind too. And when you heal those sensitivities, the sensitivity in your skin starts getting better too. And how motivated are you? Many times we are so happy being in that space. We are happy with that attention. We don't want to get better. And we are not motivated to get better because we don't want to be uh, doing work. Self-work is very, very difficult. But once you start doing that, you'll see you're so happy because the destination, when you reach the end point or when you reach your goal, you are at such a more better, happier space. Your vibrations are higher. You're more evolved. You understand why things are happening. So you need to get yourself to work on yourself, get motivated enough to go ahead because you don't want things to get worse. You don't want to be in a state where now things cannot be corrected. So make sure you motivate yourself and get ahead and clear your issues now. Are you having attention issues? So this was one thing where uh, hearing radical, I had understood that um, children, we need attention from our parents. Many times our parents are busy. Many times our parents don't give us attention or we get too much attention and it's irritating for the child and they don't know how to react. So when some girls who have been very pretty in their childhood got a lot of attention, everybody pulled their cheeks, everybody said, wow, such a cute child. As they became older, they didn't like that attention and they manifested issues so that they don't get the attention. And many times there have been people who didn't get attention and hence, they manifested problems so that they get attention. Even strangers would come up and tell you, what are you doing for this? How sad. Can you apply this? This cream worked for my child. You should try this. So that attention that we get sometimes is our need. And we need to understand what our needs are, clear those, and automatically your skin problems will heal too. So this has been my experience. And I'm sharing what all I have gone through. And of course, I've learned from Radical all these are a part of our uh, giving, you know, when you clear them, you can actually have so much, so much better skin health. So uh, the first uh, advice from me would be to love your skin. Self-love uh, by letting go of the past, let go of all those memories, all those beliefs, all those past things that you put inside your mind, all those things that you even don't know about, you know, you your uh, healing starts begin. It's like an onion. When you start opening up the layers, layer by layer, you start noticing, oh, I had this. Oh, I believe this. Oh, yes, this was what I needed to clear. Slowly, slowly, you start understanding. You just have to be open and you just have to take that first step and you can see a whole new world opens up for you. Have those difficult conversations with yourself. Talk it out. So like when I said, do I really need attention? Like, talk it out. Do I, am I doing this for that? And understand where, where is your want? What is your need? Why are you going through this? Why have I asked for this experience? Why am I getting this acne? Talk to your skin and understand what is it trying to tell you. So have those difficult conversations and understand where you're coming from. Setting boundaries, knowing yourself, knowing your needs, and acceptance of all that is. So when I say accept your skin as it is, sometimes people would be like, how can I accept my skin like this, doctor? I'm not happy. But as, as uh, you know, accepting is very difficult. I know that because as children, we've always heard, you need to be like this. You need to get good grades. You need to uh, get your skin clear. You need to eat this so that your hair is good. You need to 
all these things which we have heard in our past have actually made us not accept the way we are. And that's why we look to get better or we want to be like that one. We want to be like that one. We want our skin to be like that person. And how many of us actually, when we see a beautiful person in the room, what actually goes on in your mind? You should think about this and write it down. Do you get jealous that, wow, such beautiful skin? Do you get curious? How does she maintain her skin? Do you get insecure? Does it give you low self-esteem? Does it make you feel conscious that you are not so good and you shy away from that room because there are people who are better looking? What happens in your mind? Write it down and then you know what you have to work on. So accept whatever you are, accept your skin as you are, and then you'll see how things start changing. So I'll explain a little bit about setting boundaries. There's so much that goes on in our external life. We have toxic relationships. Sometimes the most common is the mother-in-law and the uh, Bahu relationship. We have siblings, sibling rivalry sometimes, which goes on. And managing our external drama with, with guilt, with you know, burnout in our office, we have competition, we have depression, so many things go on in our life. We need to manage that and make a healthy boundary that when I uh, am now healing myself, I don't want anything to happen in my life. Now you'll say, how can you do that? You can, because somewhere you are allowing that experience to happen to you. When you learn how to deal with that, uh, cut off that experience or stop asking for that experience, automatically the people around you will change. The situations around you will change because you have changed. So manage your external life drama. Learn how to do that by joining Radical because it has really helped me a lot. Practice detachment with conscious awareness. Now, what does this mean? So many times when we meet people, we always pick up their beliefs, we pick up their energies, we pick up their practices. You see somebody applying a certain cream, applying a sunscreen every day, you'll come back and say, should I apply a sunscreen? Which sunscreen should I buy? Because you saw somebody doing it, you want to do it too. So it's a very natural subconscious mind process that we want to pick up things from different people. And here you have to understand that each one of us is different, each one of us each one of us is unique and we have to practice detachment with conscious awareness. Each one does their own things for their own good, for their own needs. So we don't have to be like the rest and you don't have to have uh, yourself looking the best, but you might have qualities which other people don't. And so work on those and get yourself to be more unique and that creates your inner happiness. Avoid repeating the same mistakes. Uh, many times we know that if I eat the samosa, I'm going to get pimples. And then you'll still eat the samosa because it's so good. That two minute pleasure that it gives you in your mouth can land up giving you pimples, which will last for 10 to 15 days. So this was a very small example, but there have been many people who've said like, doctor, every time I do this and this happens, how do I deal with it? I, I, I don't know how to stop my mistakes. So that is where also the affirmations would help you rewire your mind, make your brain stop doing those same things and you'll see that your skin, your life, your emotional happiness changes and learn how to say no. Most of us have this inability to say no. And I did. And I used to always, uh, you know, be taken advantage of or do things for people. And uh, I would, my time was never there. It was always for people. And that when I learned, I understood how it can actually, uh, you know, when you make your boundaries, how you feel so empowered and you're feeling so much better about yourself. So these are the things you should definitely think about. And when you do these, see the change that happens in your uh, environment. So I was talking about hormones, hormones, neurotransmitters, which affect the skin, affect the brain. So what are hormones? Hormones are nothing but regulatory substances secreted by glands in our body. And these hormones can control actions of certain cells, certain organs, they can control our emotions, our behaviors, our moods. And if our hormones are imbalanced because of genetic reasons, because of um, illnesses, because of stress, that's when our moods, our thoughts, our emotions, everything changes and life is haywire. So the happy hormones, I want to prescribe a happiness diet for all of us. These are the hormones which are released when you do these activities. So if you can Include these in your week. Say, suppose you make a target, make a weekly plan that twice a week I want to do this, twice a week I'm going to do this, twice a week I'm going to do that. 
your endorphins the hormones are painkiller hormones these are released when you laugh when you exercise when you have dark chocolate when you watch a comedy serial or you're watching a comedy movie you use essential oils on your pillows you use essential oils in your shower these are natural painkiller hormones and when released can actually make you feel much better and uh, rejuvenate you faster dopamine is the reward hormone so when you complete a task when you finish eating a meal you know you're like ah what a lovely meal i had achieving goals you celebrate small wins yes today i did this you need to celebrate you need to work you need to, you you have to express so that you have release of these hormones so that your body can also start healing your cells are following what your mind is going through so whatever goes here this mind is your master mind you know the mastermind when you give the order here the body follows so if you release these happy hormones automatically happiness will become a way of life and uh, oxytocin hormone the love or the bonding hormone so when you play with your pets when you play with your children physical affection hugging kissing even having making love giving compliments and getting compliments these release oxytocin hormone and if you are looking for compliments remember you have to give them first to get them too so whatever you give out to the universe is what's going to come back to you if you have self love you're going to get love from the outside these things if you remember and you work on automatically things start easing out your body's starting to ease out your skin starts to look better your mind is happier everything will start falling into place and serotonin the mood stabilizing hormone so when we meditate when we have uh, a swimming session an hour of swimming uh, walk in nature you know you you are exposed to different bird sounds um, your the when you're swimming the water around you sunlight when you're basking in the sun you're playing in the sun you're walking in the sun early morning sun this and of course with mindfulness when you know what you're eating when you know what you're doing helps to release serotonin which controls your moods so you're not acting weird in front of people you're not behaving differently and people take you for people take you well appreciate you for be, being what you are and that can create change again in your surrounding so this is the happiness diet make sure you do these things all throughout the week now the part where i will explain to you how these radical affirmations have worked for my patients this was a 27 year old male who had blisters on his a uh, third left toe of his uh, feet left foot and he had so much pain because he couldn't couldn't put the foot down so he was limping and because of the limp his knee was also affected and he was walking with the uh, limp in the knee and in the toe now he tried three different dermatologists he went to three different doctors he had five different types of <clears throat> tubes that they all gave him antibiotics antifungals everybody asked him do you have a pet at home are you having a cat or a dog are you you know because the feet when you get such kind of blisters either it's a fungal infection or it's a bacterial infection but he's saying i can't even put my foot down where am i going to play i don't know how it started there was no uh, nobody was able to give him an answer how this happened and nobody was able to treat him either he tried oral steroids he tried oral antibiotics oral antifungals the lesion would go and in 15 days would relapse again however when he met me i understood this history and i said oh i need to do the affirmations with him i took him through a radical process where we went back to the time when this started about 18 months ago he he remembered that whole episode he told me what he had felt there was anger there was regret and when we worked on those emotions lo and behold within 15 days his skin was so much better he's written this in the chat that i had this since january 2019 and it relapsed every 15 days and all the medicines that he had taken and now he says nothing on the toe since we last spoke he was suffering since 18 months and he says thank you so much uh, your affirmations helped me and he is completely clear even till today like whenever he wishes me happy new year he wishes me happy diwali and he says i have no problem on my toe so these are my happy patients who i have used radical techniques along with medical treatment and i gave him the same i just gave him one antibiotic cream to apply and the affirmations and they did the job for him and cleared him completely from his suffering and his knee also got better eventually he had got operated for it but anyway maybe that was meant to be so there are times when things happen because they are meant to happen they are experiences which we have asked for or we need to create changes in our lives 
So don't have regrets. Don't have anger in yourself. Don't be angry at yourself because then things will manifest and then you'll have to deal with them. Here is another lady who had uh, a housewife who had eczema. So during the pandemic, many patients who use sanitizers and we all as women worked in the house, we had cleaning to do. We had uh, so much of housework to do. And hand eczema had become very rampant. But the hand eczema was usually the common sites involved are in between the fingers, the web spaces on the fingertips, because these are the fingers that we use to do all the work. So you would have cuts on the fingertips or in between the webs. Nobody had this particular lesion like this lady and only one spot on both the hands. This was very odd for me. I said, this doesn't fit into the regular hand eczema. And she says, I've been applying the steroid cream, which I always use and it works. And this, this, this time it's not working. So then I checked my book. I took up the energy center, the chakra that's affected here. I asked her if she has any shattered feeling going on in her mind. And she says, shattered? No, 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 I'm fine. Nothing has happened. I'm okay. I'm doing good. So I said, well, what's been happening in your life? How's the COVID treating you? How has anybody, have you lost anyone in your family? And then she said, yes, my mother-in-law passed away six months ago. And I'm still, there's so much work to do because her work also, I'm doing the bank work. I'm trying to clear her. You know, all the, when, when somebody passes away, you have so much uh, things to clear off for them. And she says, I'm doing all that. I'm handing my personal life, my child, my husband. And there's so much integration to do. And I said, sorry, what did you use the word integration? And she says, yeah. So I said, why would you need to get integrated? Because you were shattered? She says, oh my God. So the subconscious mind goes through a shattered feeling, but in our conscious mind, we don't realize what's happening until we hear you and we pick up the words and we tell you, this is what's going on. And when you understand that, when you work on that shattered feeling, within two weeks, her hand had completely healed. Well, one week, sorry, in one week, the same cream and the hand had completely healed. She had sent me a picture saying, just little, little cuts are being seen. Should I continue the cream? Because I told her to use a steroid for one week only. And uh, these are the results I have got from my patients. So uh, sometimes it's all in the mind. Look at this 23-year-old. Sudden onset, no injury, no heat on his neck. He's a 23-year-old going to college. He, had, he was in his last year. And he says, I don't know how this thing came about. It came on its own. He didn't have any clue. And he was shocked that how did this happen to me? He went to her local doctor, his GP, got himself treated with steroids. This is how it healed. This was all in May 2019. However, when he came to me, he was referred because he has been continuously itching on his neck all through from 2019 till now. I met him about three months ago and he had these dry rashes. You can see in the second picture, there would be redness and dryness all over the neck. And uh, again, when I heard this history and he says, I don't put anything. I'm not using perfumes. I'm not using any creams. I'm not using, I don't wear polo necks. You know, everything I tried to ask him, do you cover your neck? Do you have shirts? Do you wear a tie? No, there was no history telling me why this would happen on his neck. And hence, when I started using the radical affirmations, he says, four years ago, he had this allergic reaction, 2019, and out of nowhere. And this gave him rashes on his neck and arms, which led to a burn-like effect. And when he was itching rashes, he met me and he realized how indirectly these rashes were coming to him because of something going on in the mind. He says, radical healing helped me to understand the root cause of such rashes, along with Dr. Pitti teaching me how to cope up with it. I'm thankful to her for helping me on this path of understanding. A 23-year-old, he says, I understand my body and now I know how to take care of it. I might not be there fully, but I know that I'm on the right path. And this was my patient. You can see the neck shining clear. The skin is back to normal. Uh, in the last week, I met him. And uh, this was another happy patient that I wanted to share, you, share with you. So if there are any questions, we can start taking them after this slide. And we can also do a demo if somebody is interested. So I've put up some affirmations which have worked very well with all my patients. and. Uh, when I, when, when, if you want, you can take a screenshot, you can write these down. And if you can say them every day, you'll start noticing your skin starts getting better. You start getting aware of what is needed to get your skin better. 
the right people, the right opportunities, the right things will just come in front of you and you'll know where and how what's happening inside your mind. So uh, the soul's love technique, which works beautifully. So we all can say my skin is my soul's love. My need for good skin is my soul's love. My need for healthy skin is my soul's love. And each of these statements could be repeated three to seven to 11 times as how you feel better. My need for acceptance is my soul's love because many times inside the mind, we are not being accepted and which is why we want to make ourselves look better or appear better so that we get the acceptance. And so when my need for attention is my soul's love. My conscious feeling, when we have skin imperfections, we all get conscious. So my conscious feeling is my soul's love. And this is a very powerful one where, you know, when you have a skin problem, you have eczema, you have acne, you say, I hate this acne, doctor. Please do something about it. I'm fed up of it. I've tried so many creams. Please help me to get this better. We don't have to have hatred for that part or for your skin. You need to start accepting it and you need to start loving it. And that is where we say my hatred for this eczema, my hatred for this acne, my hatred for my psoriasis is my soul's love. My need for the hatred. Why did we have to get hatred in our mind? Which is why the hatred is projected in our skin. So you'll realize where the hatred is coming from. What else are you hating in your life? And when you work on that too, you start getting better. My resistance to let go of the hatred is my soul's love. So these affirmations, when we can, I mean, on a general, of course, when I have patients come with specific problems, I uh, work on the specific chakra. I understand where, uh, you know, with the processes that I've learned from radical, I take the patient through either an inner child healing, either they would do a past life, either they would do, um, uh, you know, understanding what has happened in the past, something that's stored inside anger, fear, guilt, and then help them to clear that with affirmations. Maybe they need about one or two sessions, three sessions, and they've got very good results. So these are the affirmations that you can do. Do we have any questions, Sienna? It's 11, 10 minutes to 11. So the last Nothing 10 in the minutes. chat, Dr. Preeti, but- uh, I'll just check. Yeah. Nothing, except for Great. finding it very clear and crisp. Great. So Dani has said, how can one address dark circles? So um, dark circles, can happen because of many reasons. Uh, first, if you're on Zoom all the time, I see you, Dani, every time. Are you putting on your sunscreen? Because the computer screen, the gadgets that we use, the phone that we're using all the time uh, gives us ultraviolet light, which is like ultraviolet light from the sun. And this can actually cause pigmentation on your face. Of course, uh, when you start applying a sunscreen, even at home, this is where is this important part. The tip that I'll give you is every time you have a bath and you come out, we wear our clothes, but your face is naked. So the sunscreen is the clothes we wear on our face and they can protect your skin from the sunlight damage, from the ultraviolet light damage, from the pollution, from the bacteria and viruses that are in the air. And the sunscreen forms a film to protect your skin. When you start using a sunscreen, your skin gets uh, rejuvenated or stays protected from the damages and automatically your original color, your normal skin color starts showing up. However, if you already have the dark circles and you want to treat them, you can put lightning creams, you can use home remedies like you can make a pack with little papaya, add a little oats powder or you can add chanaka atta, you know, the besan atta, just one spoon, take a little mashed papaya, make a little paste of it and then apply it on your face, around your eyes. These are natural things which you can do 10 minutes before your shower. And you'll start noticing that the papaya has vitamin C or citric acid. That vitamin C starts lightening your skin and have, hence you'll start noticing a change in the color. You can also use plain curds. Milk, malai and dahi have lactic acid. So if Dani is in Ahmedabad, you have you know harsh weather there, it's dry, uh, you could use malai and mix a little of haldi in it, maybe a little of almond powder in it, mix it together and apply it under your eyes, on top of your eyes, uh, 10 minutes every day, or maybe twice a week before your shower and see the dark circles looking lighter. So these are some home remedies. You could also apply lightning creams. I could write them for you. And uh, of course, uh, the inside part. So what do these dark circles make you feel? Are you conscious? 
Are you feeling low self-esteem? Are you feeling sad? What is the emotion that's going on in your mind? Mostly sadness can cause dark circles or um, sometimes it's con uh, anxiety. So if you understand where it's coming from, work on that and your dark circles automatically start feeling better. Let me see, there are some more questions. Pigmentation on the cheeks. Yes, Rachna, this will work for the pigmentation on the cheeks too. You can try these home remedies and uh, also use uh, maybe, you know, the fruit facials that you get. So use a orange chilka, the lem uh, orange peel can be uh, uh, soaked in water for some time and then use that water with cotton and put it all over your face. You can use a papaya to rub on your face and you can use dahi, milk and malai. All these could be tried. So that's for Rachna. Thank you, Dr. Madhuri. Thank you, Shazia. How are the scars of chickenpox taken care of? So when you already develop scars, Shazia, they are uh, dense in the skin. So this is a structural change. So the scars to be filled up, you need to do, you know, you need to perform a procedure like skin polishing. You could do something called as micro needling. You could do something called as fractional laser to help you fill up the scars. But if your scars are not so bad, like people tell you, oh, it doesn't matter. Why are you worrying about it? What is it that the scars make you feel? What is it that you are worried about? Or what is it that's lacking inside your mind that you're projecting this on your skin? So work on that and you'll see that the scars don't bother you anymore. But if it's really bothering you and people around, you can get, definitely go to the dermatologist and get one of these treatments to get your skin filled up. The scars can get smoother. And uh, pimples with dust and <laughs> lotions, yes. So you need to apply your sunscreen, apply a night cream. Uh, what can be done for thinning of hair? Barinder is asking. So uh, when your hair is thinning, Barinder, uh, find out if there is a thyroid hormone imbalance, find out if there's diabetes starting in your body, find out if there is any polycystic ovaries happening, your hormones could be imbalanced. And the first uh, statement, my hormones are my soul's love. So start correcting your hormones, start understanding where the problem is coming from. Uh, maybe do a blood test to find out which hormone is it that's causing a problem. Once you work on that, uh, if you need to take medications, take the medications because medical treatment along with the affirmations can do an excellent job. So uh, understand where uh, this is coming from, which hormones are involved, and then maybe I could guide you better. Um, what are the other questions? I think there is one. Presentation, people would love to see you on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Should I stop sharing? Yeah, I mean, if you're finished. Okay, okay. So, okay, let me take the last slide and then I'll st uh, stop I'm sharing. sorry, I didn't know. I thought you finished. No, ju just one last slide. Give me a second. <laughs> Oops, why can't I? Okay. So I wanted to end with this lovely uh, message that I found. The body heals with play. The mind heals with laughter. And the spirit heals with joy. And all these laughter, joy, play, I have learned from attending Radical. So I have complete gratitude to Atman for getting Radical in the world, being the channel. I want to thank all my mentors, uh, Mujib, Varsha, Aarti, uh, Uma, all the mentors who have helped me, Mamta, for being uh, there to make me realize my uniqueness that I could, being a doctor, use this along with uh, my medical uh, to help people so much more. And to the whole Radical team for being so wonderful and always being there when we needed them. So let's get to the questions now. I'll stop sharing. Stop sharing. There. Great. So I hope you all had good insights. Stretch marks in children. Apurba is asking what could have caused stretch marks in children. So uh, when children are growing, all of us usually get stretch marks on our buttocks, on our breast. On, um, so the boys usually have it on their arms because these are the muscles, these are the areas which usually change when we get puberty, when we grow into adults. So uh, most of us get stretch marks. But if your children have stretch marks from now, you need to start using uh, almond oil. You could start using uh, olive oil. 
You could do a massage every night. You could also use this uh, available in the market bio oil. Uh, it's a nice bottle which has a light oil, which is not sticky, not oily, but use, using it every night to massage on those areas of the stretch marks will reduce them and make them less prominent as they get older because many children are affected and are conscious because of their stretch marks and they won't wear certain clothes. They'll say, I don't want to go swimming. Even though swimming is needed for them and the pool is available, they say, I won't go because they're conscious with their stretch marks. So please start using these things and uh, let them, uh, let them uh, start seeing the change. At the same time, stretch marks are going to be there. Work on their conscious feeling, work on their need for acceptance. And then you'll see that they are starting to uh, be back to they're they're okay with it or they're accepting it blackishness in forehead and face krishna is asking during the winter season so many times when our skin gets dry we do tend to look dark so the blackishness has come because of the winter you'll notice every winter season around the mouth around the eyes we tend to look more darker because the harsh the hard water when we are using uh, hard water on our face or we have dry weather these areas, because they have soft skin, they tend to get more dry and they, because they're dry, they get darker. So if you want to counter the dryness, you have to, you have to counter the blackishness, you have to counter the dryness. So drink more water. We usually drink less water when we are dry. So drink more water, apply a nice hydrating moisturizer on your face immediately as soon as you finish your shower. Many times when you're in the shower, you wipe your face, you need to take that moisturizer then and there and apply it on your face immediately not wait till you come out to tie your hair wear your clothes and then you put the moisturizer your skin cells have already locked themselves up and the moisturizer will only stay on the top but when you have a little moist skin just in the shower you come out and your skin is still open the pores are still open that is when if you put your shower your sunscreen your skin nicely takes the moisture in locks it up and then you're hydrated for the next uh, eight to ten hours so this is one tip that you could follow. Put your moisturizer directly in the morning and uh, at night use a little more hydrating or an exfoliating cream with lactic acid, glycolic acid, which will help you to shed off those dead skin cells, those dry cells and make your skin smoother, clearer, along with lightening your pigmentation. Gita says, I have acne on my lower cheek and chin. What, what are your thoughts? So the lower cheek and chin, this area is very uh, common when you have hormone imbalances. Uh, if I know your age, Gita, with age, as we grow older, we start getting hormone changes. And when there is a hormone imbalance, the acne will show up only here. The children get acne on their cheeks, children can get acne on their forehead, but the adults will get acne on their jawline. And this is nothing but hormone imbalance. So try to understand which hormones are uh, going haywire. Do your blood tests, visit the dermatologist, and uh, you could even work on this area is also in radical anger and guilt and need for wisdom, your chin area. So you need to understand a little more about yourself, get to know yourself, work on your anger, which could have been a stored anger from the past, from your childhood. Work on any guilt that you have stored and then you'll see that your acne starts reducing. And of course, do my hormones are my soul's love. My need for hormone imbalance is my soul's love. And my need, my resistance to let go of the hormone imbalance is my soul's love. This could help you uh, to open up your, uh, you know, chakras, understand where, what's happening, and you'll get to know uh, your body much more. Oil to massage on the face. So Ritu, uh, definitely you could use almond oil, you could use bio oil. Uh, there are these light oils which are available now. A lot of new companies, even L'Oreal has taken out face oils, which you can be used. But the local coconut oil, the uh, you know, castor oil, all the old oils that we used to use, if they are thick, the mustard oil, castor oil, coconut oil, these can block your pores and cause acne if you are in a humid climate. But if you are in a dry climate, absolutely go ahead. Uh, all these oils will suit you. But if you are in a humid climate, these thick oils can cause issues and cause you acne. So Gita says it was from my daughter, which is she's 32. Yes. So when she's just entering, you know, this is 32 is the age where your hormones start changing again. She's going through a lot of stress, maybe at work. Check it out. Ask her. And if you can remember when she was young, did she have anger as a child? Maybe you could work on that anger and guilt and help her to heal her acne too. So Sienna says, um, 
my hormone imbalance is my soul's love, okay? Ritu is from Bangalore. Bangalore is also dry weather, yes. And Shreya says dandruff and itchy scalp in kids. So uh, when kids have a lot of heat in the body, you should check his diet. Uh, when, if they're not eating well, they're not drinking lots of water, they're not having enough salads, the fiber is missing. The heat in the body can make your bacteria and fungus, which is normally present on our skin, get in large numbers or increase the colonization. And hence you'll end up getting dandruff and you get uh, itchy scalp. However, the radical part of it would tell me that your child could be going through some resentment or repulsion, something that he doesn't like because uh, dandruff is nothing but fungal infection. So if you know the reason of fungal infection is resentment or regret or repulsion, something that he's not happy with, if you can emote that from him, ask him, what is, what is it that you don't like? I hate my, what is the fill in the blank? Like ask him, what can he tell you? What is it that he doesn't like? And if you work on that, let, learn, let him learn how to accept it. Automatically, the dandruff might go because dandruff is nothing but fungal infection. And then have I missed out anyone? Sienna, if have I missed out any question? Been on medication. Priyanka says, been on medication for severe atopic dermatitis for the last 24 years and not of negative emotions associated with it. Does affirmations help? Of course, Priyanka, especially because you have atopic dermatitis. When you have atopy, um, I have seen that atopic dermatitis, eczemas, these are nothing but incorrect storage in the subconscious mind. So the folders have got a little confused, mixed up when you've heard things in your childhood and which is why you're landing up with atopic eczema. You could check if you have any, what, when, the, when you hear the word danger, what comes to your mind? Are you being socially isolated? Are you trying to stay away from crowds? Are you staying away from people, from friends? So once you um, understand your subconscious mind, you'll be able to treat your atopic eczema. I have had many patients of eczema who have actually healed. Uh, you saw the case that I showed. I mean, uh, the neck also was like eczema because we don't know how that burn happened and he keeps scratching. That was eczema. The first boy who had the toe, when I saw him, I said, this is eczema. And he says, no, everybody's been treating me like fungus and like a bacterial infection. So eczemas can be corrected because the subconscious mind needs to be accessed. If you get into that uh, work, you'll see a lot of improvement. Please, please uh, reach out and uh, connect to any of the radical mentors and please get your uh, eczema corrected too. What about anxiety about outcome of your own child's chronic? Sorry, that was for Atman. <laughs> I went Melasma and a natural cure. Minuti is asking. Sorry? Melasma, a natural cure? Melasma. So uh, when you get melasma, your melasma is usually due to stress, hormone changes, and uh, it can happen because of too much sun exposure when you were younger. So melasma is, uh, it's called the mask of pregnancy. It could have started with your pregnancy. It can happen in menopause. So the melasma comes on your cheeks, nose, eyebrows. It can be a little on your chin, on your upper lip. And it's quite um, making people conscious. People get very conscious and they wonder how to deal with it. And it's a very refractory uh, treatment. I mean, we are not able to get rid of the melasma completely if it has been a long time. But I have had patients who have just started their pigmentation a year, two years down the line. We have made their melasma go away. Of course, with affirmations, clearing out the stress, understanding the hormone imbalance, and then correcting it. But if people have had melasma for more than two years, it's a little difficult. However, we can definitely make the pigmentation much lighter. Maybe 30% will stay and that is easily camouflaged or covered by makeup. So you will definitely be in a better space. Maybe you can come by and do a little consultation where I could make you understand the, uh, what's going on in the mind and of course treat the eczema on the surface too. But make sure you apply your sunscreen without fail because when you have pigmentation on your face, any kind of pigmentation, melasma, dark circles, forehead pigmentation, chin pigmentation. When you have melanin cells already existent in large quantities, even a five minutes of light exposure will make them proliferate. That is, they start producing babies. So they start producing more melanin cells. 
and the pigmentation keeps increasing, keeps getting more tougher to treat. So please use the sunscreen. That is the first step. Do not leave your skin uncovered. Make sure you apply your sunscreen every day. Even uh, the sunscreen has to be repeated, repeated three hourly. So after three hours, the body heat starts melting the sunscreen. Uh, we touch our faces. We are sitting there like scrubbing. We rub our eyes. So these make the sunscreen go away. And it, hence, hence, you need to reapply your sunscreen every three hours so that you are completely protected. Now you might wonder, I can't do that in office, doctor. I don't have time. I'm outside. I'm in the field. Well, you carry your sunscreen with you and just reapply a little on the areas where you have the pigmentation. That should also be good enough. You don't have to actually wash off the first sunscreen layer. You just top it up with more sunscreen on the top till you are in the sun, till you are in front of the computer, till you are outside in outdoors. And once you come back home, wash your face and leave your skin with just a moisturizer or a uh, lightening cream, but make sure you put your sunscreen. We've realized that sun protection is the first important factor which helps for melasma. I think Have we I can take a last answer? question about moles, Please. and then I think we need to give you a break. Which is the last question, Sienna? About moles on, the, moles on the skin? Moles. I can only see the... Uh, Paula okay. Goel, Dr. Paula is asking. How can I... Uh, Go down there. Can you please read the question? What is the reason for multiple moles over moles. neck and underarms? Got it. So skin tags spreading all over the body. Even Abida has said skin tags. So skin tags, moles, and um, uh, even uh, you know you get uh, warts. I mean, all these are growths. When you have growths on the body, your body is trying to tell you something. I mean, of course, moles can be genetic. Moles could be heredity because if parents have them, your skin has these, uh, the melanin cells have a certain uh, way of coming out on your skin and you're going to get them. You can't treat moles. You can't clear, keep clearing them everywhere because moles need to be actually removed. You need to excise them and remove them so that they don't come back. When we have just cauterized them from the top, the moles always grow back and they're there. But uh, you could have to excise them. Moles will be there. But Skin tags spreading all over the body. Skin tags happen with pregnancy. Skin tags can happen with diabetes. And skin tags can happen when you're putting on weight. So if your weight is increasing, your skin grows too. And that's why you see these out pouchings or skin tags on your neck, on your underarms, on your inner thighs, all the soft areas of the body. So if you are putting on weight, if you have diabetes, start correcting these things. If it's heredity, if mom had a lot of skin tags, you got them too. Well, we could go to the clinic and get them cauterized, removed with radio frequency or with electrocauterization, and they can be treated. Moles is a little doubtful, may, may or may not be able to treat, but if they are deep, we can't. If they are superficial, we can uh, use carbon dioxide laser and get rid of the moles too. But if there are too many, uh, understand why have they come. Understand what do they make you feel. Understand what is the need to get this on the body. Uh, maybe Atman could also help a little here. I don't know the metaphysical reason of getting moles all over, but uh, I would try to you know, understand what's happening in the mind. Why have they manifested this on the body? Is it just the belief of genes or is it something else? Atman, ma'am, can you throw some light here? Uh, no, Dr. Preeti, not so far. I haven't studied okay. yet. Uh, so not, but I'll keep that in mind. We'll Perfect. Then I'll also keep in mind, try to collect some more people collect some data of why, what do they feel, what is happening in their mind when they've got so many moles on their skin. So the last question from Dani, what SPF one should use daily? An SPF of 15 is minimal, which can be used indoor, outdoor, when you're going down, you're going out of the house. It lasts for only an hour. But if you're sitting on the computer, you're in office, you're going outdoors to shop, please use an SPF of 30 and a 50 if you're really exposed to a lot of sun. Uh, the higher the SPF, the thicker the sunscreen becomes. So if you're living in dry weathers, 50 SPF is better for you. Uh, humid climates like Bombay and other cities in the West Coast could be, do, could be fine with just 30 SPF. Yeah. And thank you so much. I think I'm just on time or maybe yeah. I've overshot a little. Thank no, it's you. That's fine. Everyone. That's fine. Thank you. Love thyself. Love thy skin. Thank you so much, Dr. Preeti. We have learned to heal ourselves from inside out and yes. resolve skin issues. This was yes. such an eye opener.
Thank you. This awareness on the connection between mind, body, and spirit is amazing. Thank you so much for your time and for this lovely presentation. Thank you.